Okay, so we can look into the example. Now you see this is what are specified. Uh, first of all, power under standard condition. Power under standard condition, right? Standard test condition. So let us say it could be value could be something like 230 watts, just for the sake of it. Then performance at, at you know there is a standard test condition, but performance I could have checked at some other condition also besides test and that value might also be available because test condition may not be 20 or 800, I might check at some other point. Then I have got voltage at maximum power, this would be this can be measured, this will be specified by the manufacturer current at maximum power because this characteristic that was I showed you that they would have found out in the production laboratory and you know, a quality control lab of the production system. So, maximum power whatever the current corresponding current and corresponding voltage and current that would be known to us. So, then also open circuit voltage this would be known to us, short circuit current this will be known to us, this would be specified. So, if you are looking buying them, you can look into this kind of a chart and find out what they are supplying, right. Then power temperature coefficient that is your alpha, right, and current temperature coefficients and voltage temperature coefficients, right, okay. So, you can you can you know you can uh, you, this 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 is what will be given to you alpha beta and delta that would be give also specified noct is specified because they would have measured in the laboratory and let's say this is 45 degree centigrade efficiency at standard test condition pstc divided by 800 ac standard test condition is this so let's say 0.185 length is given width of the cell is given and weight is given anyway. So, this will give me the idea, this will give me the idea. So, this is the specifications, this is how typically a PV will be specified, you know PV will be specified, PV module will be specified. So, this, this is how it would be specified, if there are number of them in series and parallel then you can look into them. So, this is how it is. ambient condition has to be known, right. So, solar in this case solar radiation rate say 800 degree, 800 watt per meter square and ambient temperature is 27. So, area you can calculate out, you can calculate out the area product of these two and incident angle modifier you can calculate out from k which is 1 plus b into 1 by cos theta minus 1. Remember that I equation I gave you, this was the equation. So, one can one can find out from k, one can find out k from this equation, right. These empirical constants are of course known. So, knowing the angle of incident under the condition that you are looking at under the condition that you are looking at, right. So, you can find out K and then T cell you can find out. T cell how, how do you do, how do I find out T cell from this expression T cell is equals to K is known to me, this tau and alpha absorptivity transmittivity this should be known to me how much passes through and how much is absorbed and efficiency under you know efficiency and then this is the incident radiation u these are known. So, ambient condition known I can find out T cell or I can find out from NOCT 2800 and what is the incident radiation. So, this I can calculate out this I can calculate out. So, T cell I can calculate out T cell I can calculate out and then efficiency this I can calculate out from this formula right. So, this I can calculate out because new standard condition is already given. 0.185. So, if you come to this one, this is known, delta is known, T cell I have found out, T ambient plus, etcetera, etcetera. So, therefore, I and you know T cell under standard condition that is also given. So, and P solar power, solar power that I will get, I can calculate out based on this formula. P solar power for let us say standard you know condition that 1000 watt per meter square I had. So, I can find out right what is the power. So, that is how one can calculate this out. That is how. So, for the data that is just there, the value is area is this much 1.24, which is product of these two, 
1.559 into 0.798 meters, right? Incident angle modifier calculated is 0.836, right? So, incident angle modifier calculated is uh, K is calculated from the formula that I have given and it is 0.836. T cell calculated out comes out to be 52, T ambient plus you know that formula that was there, this formula was there. So, based on this you can calculate out T ambient plus K T, K tau alpha minus nu divided by U i i c. So, these data were all supplied and you can calculate out and it comes out to be it comes out to be 52, so efficiency is point and the power comes out to be 138.131. So, that is the power, solar power you can do. So, that is the specification and some basics behind them and the efficiency and the amount of power you will get it, you can calculate or that is the procedure we have discussed. So, P load maximum would be I load, V load divided by efficiency into some diversity factor. What is diversity factor? Because all will not be loaded to their maximum peak simultaneously, right? Uh, building services, we talk about that. For example, this room is connected to, let us say, number of uh, lamps and each draws 5 ampere, right? Now, probability that all the lamps in all the rooms will be on simultaneously is not 100 percent, it is less. So, if a cable is connected all together to all of them, that cable will not be not 5 multiplied by n, but 5 multiplied by n multiplied by what is called diversity factor. So, this is what it is, this it is, a, it is what is it. Efficiency system in terms of battery efficiency and V load etcetera, etcetera. So, for all of them one can calculate out power that is maximum and correspondingly you know area of panel E load during the day. So, I load V load, you know how many number you need, right? How many number you need you can find out. So, efficiency of system in terms of battery efficiency, inverter efficiency, etcetera, etcetera, because it will store them and so on. So, that is how that is related to uh, what you can use in buildings, uh, photovoltaic uh, building integrated photovoltaics, which I think <laughs> in an introduction to you. And if you are implementing them, then you know how much is the, you know, uh, the specification, what should be the specification and additional calculation provided in terms of efficiency and power. I think uh, that finishes our discussion on this, uh, right. We will obviously break for a while, but in the meantime, let us look for something else, then we will break and then have some question answer session, right. Quickly. We will try to look into some other things. Solar water heating. So, you know, these are this is what is called flat plate collectors, right? So, you have direct radiation, direct radiation, and some diffused radiation. What is direct radiation? If the sun is here, direct radiation will fall onto this. But even on this or vertical surface, let us say on this side, the sky bolt is there. So, radiation comes from the sky bolt because sun is sun, sun is too large. So, radiation comes from all direction, from direction of the sun. Obviously, the, the side on which it is night, it will not receive that. So, 50 percent, half the hemis, you know, hemisphere, half the globe receives the sun's radiation, it is stops atmosphere. So, if the atmosphere is at the top, the sun's radiation will come into that and then atmosphere absorbs it in all directions. So, beam radiation comes from the direct from the direction of the sun, but diffuse radiation will come even otherwise, right. So, this is absorbed here, some radiation long wave radiation goes back, some convection losses takes place and convection is accelerated by rain, wind, etcetera. There is a glass absorber here glass cover, what it does? Glass will trap the sun's radiation because glass allows short wave radiation to come in, but it will block all the long wave radiation. So, if this will get this portion will get heated up glass cover, but you like to reduce down this convection 
as much as possible. So even some people have been trying vacuum and uh, double glass layer and things like that. But anyway, so there will be some convection set up here and these are the ones basically some sort of blackened pipes carrying water. So, heat gets absorbed. So, these are kind of absorbers and this available heat through this one is then transmitted elsewhere. So, part of the power incident will be absorbed, part will be converted to okay, this was for photovoltaics that we have done, this is already done, this we have already talked about, I think there is a repetition. This is coming to solar water system, this is how it would look like, you know, this is how it can look like, this is how it can look like. So, these are the ones, the black, the blue colored ones that we talked about, this ones. And this absorbs the water and since hot water has a tendency to go up, it will, it will go up and then of course, you can, you can use them. So, usually a solar thermal device captures and transfers the heat energy available in solar radiation, which can be used for meeting the requirements of heat in different temperature ranges. So, there are, you can have low temperature ones, hot water 60 to 80 degrees medium temperature 80 to even 140, but then water will not be the liquid. High temperature if you can generate, then cooking and power generation that also you can do. right? So, this is one of those solar collector insulated hot water storage tank. So, this is the storage tank, hot water storage tank. Cold water tank with required insulated hot water pipeline and accessories. In case of smaller systems, the hot water reaches the user by natural thermosiphonic process because hot water will move upward, it will move upward, right. Cold water comes from the bottom, gets heated up, it will move upward. So, thermosiphonic effect, right, because of convection buoyancy effect and uh, storage tank located above the collector in higher capacity system, you might need a pump. So, this is, this were there in the hostels, some of our hostels, this were there actually uh, for using them in the kitchen. Sometime you can connect this water as a preheating system for uh, hot water system, you know, hot water supply system, because you will get partial heating by the solar water and that, that you supply to a, a hot water tank where you will have a heater, it will further heat it up and then you can recycle it. So, generally depending upon the area, the capacity, you know, 60 degree, etcetera the collector area in square meters, this kind of guidelines are available. So, which consists of an insulated outer metal box, I have already explained to you and the glass sheet. Inside there is a blackened metallic absorber, blackened tube sheets with built in channels or riser tubes to carry water. The absorber absorbs the solar radiation and transfers the heat to flowing water. Something like this, for example, these are the flat plate collector and it can collect, hot water will move and this is the storage, etc. Some, as I said, people do use evacuated tube collector and solar water heaters. So, these are made of double layer borosilicate glass because convection losses you want to reduce. What happens is, if you go to the first one, first slide itself, this portion, it will get heated up because this is glass, this will not allow radiation to go in, but this will absorb, but this will also get heated up because air is there, convection current will set in. So, if you put two glass layers here, the circulation is going to be less because the depth for circulation is less. And if you evacuate it, no air, then convection will be minimized even. So, that is what is done sometime, right? That is what is so evacuated tube, tube collector. But this efficiency has to be seen, cost efficiency has to be seen. It is a double layer borosilicate glass tube evacuated for providing insulation. The outer wall is an inner tube is coated with selective absorbing material. This helps absorption of solar radiation and transfers heat to the water which flows through the inner tube. So, this is the kind of thing capacity and collector area and so on. Such guidelines are available, basic principle or something of this kind, right. So, 
supposing I use a heat pipe and then use a vacuum tube with high vacuum there, the convection losses will be minimized here. So, the hot water travels through this right and solar cycle heat carrier of course, and you know so this is this is high vacuum system one can adopt this kind of system as well. Right. So, uh, generally temperature difference and collector efficiency larger the temperature difference you know if the, the temperature difference is high thermal losses increases. If the temperature difference is high losses increase because it would be convective loss or radiative loss is a function of temperature differences. There will be some optical losses in the glass itself there will be some absorption. So, when there is no temperature difference there will be no losses, but that is not possible. So, if the you know so efficiency would it would energy is 200 watt per meter square 400. So, depending upon the energy that is incident. So, efficiency depends upon the temperature difference between the actual system and its surrounding higher of this thermal losses will be more optical losses will be there anyway. So, in order to compare collector test institution usually estimate efficiency curves based on measurement of collector performance. These curves are given for irradiance or incident radiation value and at a variety of temperature T c and ambient temperature. So, collector temperature T c and ambient temperature T a the commonly used empirical equation is given as this. So, T c is the collector temperature this ambient temperature this must be a constant and it is a parabolic equation this is the incident radiation right. So, that is how it would so as I was saying partially you can you know this is what it will look like. So, the cold water would be stored at the bottom and it comes like this cold and this this of course, travels to this this pipeline travels to this and absorbs the solar radiation and when it is going out of this return this is in warm and this way. and then you can take it to the water supply or connect it to a boiler or something like that you know heater where it can be further heated and domestic supply also can be. This has been used for swimming pool and similar sort of situation quite often used for swimming pool and similar sort of situation often for many years. Now, it is uh, you know maybe 30, 40 years people have been using similar kind of system. So, that is what I am saying. So, if you have a water heater this comes here. So, this 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 comes here this is a hot water tank and this is my heater. So, where I am heating the water again hot water is coming like this and pumped right. So, that is how the hot water is uh, I mean whatever the heating system heating liquid fluid I am using that will be circulated and this one is the other fluid which passes through this finally, the water this is the water hot water cold water here. So, cold water feed is there hot water outlet is there. So, in a building hot water system you can use this and it can actually save a lot of your you know and if you have installed this kind of system as you can see when you talked of ECBC the efficiency is higher efficiency is higher you know if you are uh, in terms of compliance it is much better. So, that is what it is the other system is something like putting into a swimming pool. So, the hot water comes put into a heated to the pool cold water goes circulated filtered etcetera etcetera and so either for building heating building hot water supply system or swimming pool one can use them and that is what the device looks like. I think sometime I just mentioned, but I will go through it again. So, essentially if you see this is an insulation and uh, you have a, you know um, basically a glass cover which will trap the solar radiation and then there is some kind of an absorber which is usually tubes right this is the absorber and uh, you know that's, that space is in between. So, rain wind snow etcetera etcetera. So, when solar radiation falls into is diffused and direct radiation part of it it of course, goes back through convection and radiation the glass itself will get heated up. Rest all penetrates into penetrates into this and they heat up this portion. There is a convection current which can be set up 
which can you know which can set up in between this space and some convectional losses can be there and whatever is you know this this one traps that's what is the available heat so usually if you look at it two things are important glass two air resistance and resistance of the standing air layer that's the u so u value of the u value of the you know u value of the air to glass and glass to you know glass to outside i mean basically there are two component so this this is the glass so how much is the heat loss if i am looking at so this is the outside temperature outside the this is the absorber outside is this air is this so these two resistances are forms of 1 over u right and uh, class 2 air resistance and resistance of the you know makes this u actually and this is of the order of around 0 0.12 0 0.2 meter square watt kelvin right so basically this is the resistance from air to glass and inside this is uh, one over this h you know like uh, the the this is sorry the air inside this is inside this is inside and this is the outside so outside there is a outside if you look at it from outside from here this is we can express it in terms of h not surface conductance which we did earlier because there is a convection and there is a radiation and uh, this resistance is this is so this resistance is order of the order of HGO is 5 to 6 watt meter square Kelvin, right? So that means what we are getting, we are getting how much the U value of this particular one we are looking at. So far we have looked into U value of this particular one. So UF stands for this, actually U value of this. So UF is of the order of around 5.3 watt meter square Kelvin. Typically, this is the kind of order. And if you look at this beyond this, of course. So this is the, you know, this is the cover glazing. That's what I was talking at, and I'm looking at its resistances right now. This is the absorber of some form, which might be tubes of water or something of that kind. And then the, you know, the cloud cover glazing absorber, as I said, and then this is the outside frame, right? Insulation generally is insulation, so that every all all heat is conserved I mean you know trapped here and there could be some sort of gas layer or I mean which would be air which could be air or you know gas layer or something like that. So this modeling of this one would look something like this basically I have a resistance outside air temperature and this side is also outside air temperature. This is the insulation this is the glass part of it this is the glass part of it and then, then there is a air gap right and then this is the absorber and then there is a air gap again. So this can be modeled in this manner that means I have the convection and radiation so H naught actually I was taking care of. So equivalent resistance term I can think of because you remember HO 1 over is HO is conductance surface conductance which has got two component one is the convection one is the radiation. So, the radiation you know this I can model as equivalent resistances then conduction through the glass then conduction through the glass conduction through the glass just now we looked into it conduction through the glass and then there is convection in the air gap and there can be some radiation in the air gap as well right then at the absorber there is a heat taken out because it will absorb the heat which is whatever has come in and but still some of the heat will be lost basically. So there is a convection and radiation to this the insulation the, you know insulation through this insulation conduction would occur and then from the surface to outside again there is a radiation and convection. So the equivalent you can model it in this manner the complete thing. So this there will be kind of H naught here or 1 over H naught that is the resistances of both then the glass resistance then equivalent resistance of this air gap 
then this will have the you know the some heat will the heat it will have it will be absorbing some heat which will be mass into specific heat of the material that is flowing rate of mass flow into specific heat of the material plus temperature difference of this one and outer outer air then there is again convection and radiation because this will be you know this will be at higher temperature and how much is the loss so efficiency of the system can be calculated based on this right so equivalent elements for heat transfer model would look something like this and if you want to calculate out this is the incident radiation if it is i absorption is alpha rest all get reflected transmitted is tau into area of the collector will give you how much heat is coming in how much heat is coming in right and then there will be this is collector temperature to air temperature so there is a loss so conduction heat loss outside right and then heat stored in the fluid would be mass rate in fact mass road rate specific it and outside air temperature and inside the absorber inside the absorber absorber is ti ti is the temperature inside the absorber so this is the temperature difference right and mass so this is a this is mass into specific into temperature that's the that's what it is absorbing that's what it is absorbing all right and then there's a removal factor so removal factor is given by this this is what is absorbed divided by this is what was coming in minus this is what is lost because both side i have air and this is inside inside you know so this is the inside of inside of the absorber so total e wall on both sides that's a that's called heat removal factor this is a proportion of heat absorbed by the absorber divided by whatever you know heat that is coming in radiation coming in minus whatever is lost so that's called is a collector heat removal factor right now maximum energy that you can get would depend upon this heat removal factor right heat removal factor so heat removal factor is what it's a ratio of heat absorbed by heat that is that came in minus net heat that was actually coming in right so if i this is what in my in fact if you see you know the fr is fr is this divided by this term a i t alpha u l minus t i so f multiplied by this this gives me the heat absorbed actually so efficiency is defined in terms of this divided by a into i what has come in so that you know heat removal factor gives me what this gives me the heat stored so this is heat stored can be written as mcp to minus ti can be written as fr into this this fr into a into i t alpha i tau alpha right minus u l so if i if i write if i take this on to the other side if i take on to the other side if i take it take this to the other side storage factor will be fr multiplied by this that is the amount of heat absorbed right so amount of heat absorbed can be written like this divided by whatever is coming in that is a into intensity of radiation that's the efficiency of the system that's the efficiency of the system right so efficient efficiency is now if i divide by ai i will get cancelled here i'll remain i'll be left with a will also cancel so fr t alpha minus this fr multiplied by to you know a a gets cancelled both these places so i'll be left with fr fr ul to minus ti a gets cancelled by i so efficiency is given by fr tau alpha minus fr ul tau o minus outside you know air temperature and inside divided by i so that's the efficiency of the system that's what you know so that's basically is the efficiency of the system so this so i think we looked into so essentially if it is water then mass rate of mass flow into specific it into temperature difference will give you temperature of the water and air surrounding will give you the amount of heat that has been absorbed 
and this is the similar one where it is stored. There is a construction that we looked into, right? And one can one can actually find out that if the depending upon the temperature differences, the air and the collector, collector efficiency is a function of this temperature, right? With the input energy E 200, 400, 600. So, thermal losses increases, thermal losses increases as your temperature differences increases, that is understandable. And also, the, as the radiation received is more, radiation received is more. So, there are some optical losses and the thermal losses, they tend to increase. Optical losses is by and large constant because transmission is taken care of that, right? Reflectance and transmission of the glass. So, that is by and large is a constant. So, that is efficiency is given by this. And use in different countries, if you see installed collector, India is somewhere here, China uses this much, USA uses this much. So, quantum, quantum wise, uh, somewhere Australia, Brazil, Japan and so on. So, 2009 and 1999. So, this is 2009, I mean sorry, to 19, 2009, this is 1999, this is 2009. So, the increase, Israel has increased, Greece has increased, Australia and so on. So, the, there is an increasing trend and use of this kind of technology, right. So, I think we will we'll break here. So, if you have some question, I would like to answer and maybe start from here itself. So, if you have some question, I would like to answer.